Am I good? All right. Oh, I just heard a little snack in here. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Center for Wildlife, Center for Wildlife's morning meeting um, with wildlife ambassadors. So I have a friend here today um, that is going to come out. She's in here right now, but we're getting her food ready for her because that's going to be the best way for you guys to get a peek at her. Um, so we're excited that a lot of people are tuning in to our uh, morning meeting series and you guys have had the best questions and we really, really love them. Uh, so we really appreciate you guys tuning in and learning all about some of your wild neighbors. So without further ado, what I will do is start to open our little friend here and she'll come out. You'll see that I do keep my gloves here just in case if she gets startled or something, we do want to just be careful. Oh, goodness, we're ready for breakfast. Miss Ma'am. Right here. Yeah, what's that? So I don't know if you guys can see her dish. This is sort of called a puzzle dish. So sometimes Ophelia eats a lot and eats really quickly. So this helps her to slow down and enjoy her food. See how she can't just gobble it up? So Ophelia is our uh, North, sorry, our Virginia Opossum Ambassador. And like the name says, Virginia opossum, they're not really native to this area. Um, Ophelia came to us a few years ago after someone had tried to raise her as a pet. Um, so she is not as um, afraid of humans as she should be, as we can see with the close proximity from me to her right now. She's trying to get a piece of fish right now. Um, so these animals have actually traveled up our highways and byways from down south. And you can see, if you look at this tail, if she's busy, she might let me hold it up that tail doesn't have any fur on it. And so in the winter time, these guys have a really hard time. You can see these ears, they have no fur on them. And if you can see those toes as she's grasping for food. Um, oh, you didn't want to eat the acorn. Yeah. Um, they're also exposed. So imagine if you were to go out in the middle of winter in the snow with no boots, no socks, um, no pants, and no gloves. So it wouldn't be very uh, pleasant and you wouldn't have a very good time. We do often see these guys unfortunately come in because of frostbite. Um, so what happens is they actually travel up, like I said, the highways and byways and people say, well, you know, why do they do that? So in today's world where there's lots and lots of things going on and it can feel overwhelming um, of, you know, what can I do to help wildlife? She just slurped up two fish at once. That was impressive, Ophi. Um, one easy thing that you can do to help wildlife is don't throw food out of your window. If you um, have like a hard boiled egg like Ophelia has here and you, you know, are, have to peel it, keep the shell in the car. Keep it in a little baggie or, you know, hold it in your hand. But if you throw it out the window, what happens is it makes our highways and our roads sort of like big McDonald's for animals like Ophelia. So she's mainly a scavenger. So she'll come alongside the highway and see that there's all these snacks and treats and things like that. And then unfortunately they do get hit by cars. Do we have any questions or anything we so far? We do actually. Perfect. Carolyn, hi. Hi, Carolyn. Um, so Molly asks, how much do they weigh? Hi, Miss Molly. Well, Ophelia weighs a little bit too much. So she's actually a little chunky, um, or has been. So you can see that behind her eyes, there's a little bit of fat reserve on the side. So that's why we do this with her diet now in the, in the dish like this, and also a very strict diet. So like she won't get a meal tonight. I think she's around two and a half, three pounds. Um, she is a female, so she's a little smaller than some of the males that we would have out there. Um, but they come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes there and colorations. They're pretty neat. Levi also says hi. Hi, Levi. <laughs> hi, Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Is Deacon watching too? <laughs> Yay. So Ophi is a magnificent ambassador. Um, opossums are really misunderstood. So lots of times people will look at them. And many times, because of like looking at this tail, um, they'll look and they'll go, oh, it's a big rat. They're not. They're not even related to rats. They're not rodents. These guys are actually marsupials, and they're North America's only marsupial, which means she has a pouch that she does not like me to show people, but it's right under here on this underneath of her belly. The inside, her fur outside is not... Um, the same fur as the fur that's in her pouch. Inside her pouch is this softer red fur. Um, it's really just beautiful and amazing. And she can fit 13 babies in that pouch. And those babies, once they're born, will crawl up into the pouch and they'll stay there um, for about three months, which is 
it's sort of amazing to think of. So not only is this mom walking around defending herself, she's now walking around defending her 13 babies in her belly. She's trying to get enough food because those babies are nursing the whole time. So these guys will be out and about during the day. If you feed feral cats, um, you will have these guys in your yard. They are big fans of cat food. Uh, the other fun thing about them is that um, they have the most teeth of any mammal, which means you know, they're pretty much omnivores. They'll eat just about everything that they put out there. I'm putting their blueberries back in there. She likes those. Yeah, that was one of the questions. What do they eat? Yeah, uh, They eat just about anything they want. The most important thing they eat to us, these guys, because they groom like a household cat. If any of you have cats, watch your cat while you're home. That cat will groom and lick itself for hours every day. Oh, you got crunchies. What was that? The acorn? That was good. Oh, no. Eggshell. Got it. Um, so these guys do the same thing. So they'll walk through the grasses. And has anyone ever gone on a nature walk? And then you have, when you get home, you have to do a tick check. So these guys are always doing tick checks. So they're constantly grooming and that sort of thing. And they'll just eat those little tiny ticks off of all that fur. They can eat, actually, the latest study that I just read is that they can eat over 5,000 ticks in a week, which is spectacular tick control for us because not many things eat ticks. Um, as far as you know, birds or animals or things like that go, ticks are kind of an anomaly. But these guys are phenomenal tick control and they just gobble them right down and they're really, really wonderful. Another question is, do opossums vocalize? They do vocalize. They, I kind of love their vocalizations when they're babies. Um, and babies, when they're first born, are itty bitty, teeny tiny, and then they get bigger and bigger. And then it's sort of a miniature version of these guys. But their fur changes, um, and it's usually like really soft, and their eyes aren't open when they're first born. And they'll do this thing when they get scared, and they'll go and make that sort of noise. And it's rather adorable because they're showing all their teeth, and you're like, oh, you're so cute. She will no longer do that. That's a baby thing, but she will growl. She will hiss. Um, she'll definitely that sort of thing. But these guys are also misunderstood. If anyone's ever heard the term playing possum, um, she doesn't get to decide if she's playing a possum. So when they get stressed out or something frightens them, their response is to literally pass out. They faint, sort of like fainting goats. And they will pass out. They don't decide. They're not like, oh, are they awake? Nope. Oh, I'm going to wait. They're literally unconscious. And they can be that way for up to four hours, depending upon what happens, um, which is, if you think of it, a great um, adaptation, because if something's going to eat them, it would be best to be unconscious. But the other thing that they do, which is kind of funny when they play possum or pass out, is they drool excessively from their mouth, which is gross. And they also excrete a really stinky, gross substance from their bum. And so oftentimes predators are like, ooh, I'm gonna eat this. It's like when you take um, the milk out of the fridge, right? And you take the cap off and you sniff it and you go, nope, that's not good. Or, yep, I could eat this. So because they're sending off such bad smells, usually the predators are like, mm, I think this opossum's already gone bad. And they'll just leave them alone. Uh, they do face an uphill battle um, getting hit by cars though, because they are slow and their eyesight is not very good. So again, not throwing food out the window is a big way to help these guys and securing your trash. Oh, does she shed? She does shed. Not like Henry and not like my dogs. I've discovered while being at home with them for a bit, they shed a lot. Um, but she does blow out uh, the her coat a little bit in the spring. And her hair is just like our hair. So like if we were to have a brush and brush her daily, which we don't have to because she takes care of that herself. Um, but the brush would get full of fur, uh, just like our hair brushes do. That's a great question. I love her coloration. <laughs> Somebody asks, is she black or brown? She is a, yes, is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so she's more blackish over on the front, and then she turns more brown on her back um, and gets a little black back here, too. Um, and they look like, I don't know if you can see her feet, but they look like um, little gloves, because like the fingerless gloves, um, because the toes are all white. And then, and you can see her grab things just like a human with those little feet. It's really magnificent. You're so amazing. We do have a footprint of, um, of uh, not Ophelia, sorry, um, of one of our other ambassadors that passed away, an, an opossum. Um, and when we put his foot down to take the print and took it off, it was amazing because you could see all of the 
um, swirls and you know th loops and things like that that people have on their fingerprints. So these guys have that too, which is kind of amazing. And so Wilbur's footprint, I think, will be different than Ophelia's footprint. She has not wanted to give me a footprint, so we'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait, huh? All right. Brennan, age 10. Do they have fur when they are born? Hi, Brennan. That's a great question. They do not. They are naked, tiny, little pink, alien-looking like babies. It's amazing that they... It's just phenomenal to watch them when they come in. So a lot of times when people are... Uh, my kids are now 14 and 10. And in the springtime, when these guys are a little bit more active, uh, because it will be you know mating season and baby season, um, if I see one that's been hit by a car, I will stop, one, to check if it's okay or if it's, you know, pass on. But second is if it's a female, sometimes they have babies in their pouches. And so what folks have done in the past is they've brought us the, the whole mom. Um, you know, they've, they've carefully put her in a box and brought her to us. Um, and, and we'll take care of, you know, trying to see if there are babies in the pouch and, and how old they are and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, depending upon the age, there's, there's a certain age where they're um, able to survive and be fostered. Oh, crunchy acorns. I wish I could chew my food like that. <laughs> oh, you get it. Was it good? Oh, it's so delicious. Yeah, so they are. Just make sure. I get so sidetracked when watching her eat. It's so fun. Do you love it? What are you looking for still? No, you're still looking for more. She has her dessert here. She doesn't know that quite yet. So we have fruit and grapes and things like that available. So another amazing thing about opossums is that they only live to be around two to three years old. Um, even in captivity, they just haven't um, developed the ability to survive much longer than that because they have so many babies. Um, you know, they are, they have a lot of babies because they don't live very long as well. Um, but these guys, it's tough because Ophelia is about two, two and a half right now. But she is like a little rock star. She just comes out, eats her food. She explores all of, she'll go, we'll take her into cage 17 to take her for like enrichment walks and things like that. We can't walk her like we walk Henry. Um, Henry usually sticks around and, and doesn't go very far. I think Ophelia would take off and run, run the gamut, just get going. Unless we had fish juice and things like that or this platter for you. And then you would eat it all, right? You're such a good girl. Does anybody have any questions on um, where you might be able to find them or anything like that? I haven't seen that question no yet, questions? but Allison asked, how is her hearing and does she not have fur on her tail so she can get a better grip? So mm. do they hang? Great question. So the hearing is decent. It's probably better than her eyesight. Her sense of smell is like her, her big thing that she, her sense that really is her money maker, if you will. Um, it's how she finds her food and that sort of thing. Um, the hearing is, is pretty good, um, but I, again, they don't really hunt. Uh, they scavenge, they're omnivores. Uh, they'll, they'll sort of take the, the path of least resistance or the easiest meal. So you will find them a lot in the suburbs um, and in the, even in cities. The first opossum I ever saw was in Los Angeles, um, which is kind of funny since I've grown up in New England my whole life. Um, but again, they weren't up here for the last, I don't know, in the last 30 to 50 years, I think they've come up, um, like I said, through the highways. As far as the, the I know, I, gotta, I just got to show the tail. The tail not having fur on it. So they don't really grip with it, as in they don't hang. It's not a, pre, a prehensile tail, so they don't, you know, you see all the, the cartoons and the pictures of, you know, the tails wrapped around and all the babies and the adults are hanging upside down. They don't really do that. Um, you can, when they're younger, uh, pose that picture, if you will, um, but it's not really a natural um, behavior for them to exhibit. What the tail is, is it's, it's almost like another hand or foot. Um, and so when they're walking, they use it for balance. Um, you'll see her whenever um, she goes into the cage, just that tip of that tail, it, it'll wrap around things. But it's more for sort of reassurance, like, you know, holding someone's hand as you walk across the street or something like that, as opposed to like a strength and a, um, um, a tool, I guess, if you will. And these poor guys, so the tail is so long, it does have hair on it. Um, it has hair sort of like... Let's see if I can get a little closer. Pet an elephant. Yeah, definitely come on over. She's very busy with her food, so she, I think, is very mellow today. Oh, do you see Katie coming? Hi. Here, look, though, I have dessert. Hey, oh. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm on the TV. 
Oh, look at this. What's that? Of course. <laughs> oh, delicious. Well, turn let the kids see. Are you going in there to eat it? She might turn around and eat it. She might also come back out again. Her tail. Know. She's so funny. So yeah, you can see that tail. And you can't, I don't think you can even get it on film, but by touching it, it's not just sandpapery. Um, there are little stiff, bristly hairs on the tail. Um, so it, it's interesting, and you wonder if we're gonna be able to watch them adapt and, and grow fuzzier tails with them being up in this area. Um, you will often see opossums that are missing the tips of their tail, or you can see like here, she's had a, um, an old injury to it where she probably kinked it or, um, you know, that happened when she was a baby. Her tails always looked like this. But they will also um, amputate bits of the tail um, just because of the um, frostbite and things like that, which is kind of tough. But biologists, it's how they tell um, if an opossum has lasted through a winter or not, so it helps them to tell how old they are. Hey, you, you want more dessert? JoJo's got a question. Okay, 11 years JoJo. old. Yeah, Would you, uh, where do they sleep? Oh, so that's a great question. So a lot of folks would like to entice these guys to come onto their property. And one of the reasons that people like them is, again, like I said, um, because they have, they eat all those ticks. They're a great neighbor to have. So a really easy way to um, get them, you know, or give them a home on your property is just to put something like this out there, an old crate or something like that with a towel or a blanket inside. Know that you might not just attract opossums, you might attract some other friends, um, but you can also just, you know, set something up with straw. They love dens. They may find themselves underneath your deck or something like that. Um, I've had many calls with people who, um, you know, we put porches on our, or sorry, we put couches on our porch. Look how she holds it. I just love it. Um, in New England for the spring and summer, because it's just nice to sit on the porch. You talk to your neighbors and you don't want to move the couch in and out. So you leave it outside. Well, opossums like to fit themselves into nice little teeny tiny snuggly spots. So many times we'll have people call and say, there's an opossum in my couch. They're pretty nomadic. So if you have them in your yard and you don't want them there, um, you can put a light out, you can put a radio out. They're pretty quick to figure out when, you know, they're like, oh, this isn't a nice neighborhood. I don't want to live here anymore. Um, but they're they're pretty harmless. If you secure your trash and things like that, are you going to eat the whole thing? <laughs> Ophi, girl. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> She's like, no, there's still some fruit on there. Oh, good. Was that delish? Ella They're wants so to know, funny. what is um, Ophelia's favorite thing to eat? Ooh, so Ophelia just loves to eat, period, I think. She does love grapes. Oh, we're not doing the strawberries. Are we going for the grapes? Can you get them? Um, but the, yep, there she goes. Preference is her, or her preference is grapes. Her favorite, <laughs> she's not a polite eater. <laughs> But it's so cute. Um, her favorite thing, and it's so gross, is anything dipped in fish juice. So I could put carrots in fish juice. I could put avocado. Well, I don't know if she can eat avocado. I would have to look that up. Um, I could put spinach in fish juice and things that she might not eat before. As long as it has fish juice on it, she thinks it's just magnificent. Wow, oh, if you are... I hope you guys eat a little cleaner than she's like, I don't care. I'm so happy right now. Is that so tasty? Are you going to clean your hands? You look like you're getting ready to preen or something. She's so funny. How old is Ophelia? So she's about two, two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if I can go back and get the other questions. Some other questions. Oh, Shannon asks, how soft do they feel? Meredith, age five. Oh, nice. Meredith, that's a great question. With Ophelia, I don't really know because she doesn't really like to be touched. Um, what I can tell you is that um, when we have touched her, this hair out here, yep, okay, you want this instead? There you go. This hair, the coarser hair on the outside is more coarse um, and feels, um, I'm trying to, not like a wiry coat, I guess, if you will, but then underneath she does have some pretty soft fur. Um, and again, when they're babies, that coat changes a lot. So it goes from like really velvety soft to um, this. She also um, hasn't developed a winter coat really. Um, for the winter, she does live outside in an outdoor enclosure, um, but she's a little bit spoiled and she may or may not have two or three cat beds that 
when I went to get her this morning, it had to be like 75 degrees inside her little cat bed. So she was very warm and very cozy, weren't you? Was it so fun? Mm. I don't know if you can see her feet, but she actually does have um, little toes and it's like a little hand, just like our hand. And it's just magnificent. You're pretty cool. And Allison wants to know if they do fall over, how do they get back up? Oh, when they play possum? Oops, mm. Sorry, I made a noise. That was terrifying to you. So when they do fall over, it's literally, um, like if you've ever seen the videos of fainting goats um, online, their brain literally just goes and kind of, it's like you faint. So if they're standing, they just fall over. They don't have very far to fall. They don't have very long legs or anything like that. But if they're in a tree or something like that, and, um, you know, something startles them, they, you know, the potential is there for them to fall down and, and hurt themselves. Uh, but again, the main reason we see them in here at the center um, is because they get hit by cars, unfortunately. Uh, so we treat, at the Center for Wildlife, we treat over 2,000 injured and orphaned wild animals every year. Um, and we also present over 400 education and outreach programs. And we do all of that with no state or federal funding. So it's we love when folks book programs because when they do that, you're supporting the care of people like Ms. Ophelia here. Um, and she's actually also, I meant to mention it um, yesterday with Gaia and I forgot, all of our ambassadors are available and she might actually just wander around. That would be fun. Um, all of our ambassadors are available for adoption. So it's just a $25 fee and you can go on our website and sponsor their care for a year. Um, and you get a card with their picture on it and their natural history and their personal history. Are you going back to sleep? <laughs> She's like, well, I don't know. This, no, I don't know. No, no. We have more here. What do you think? Are you getting frustrated because you couldn't get it out? There we go. How's that? I'll do better. Um, so, yeah, it's a great gift. It's also a great experience once this quarantine thing is over. Um, Ophelia is here um, daily and, you know, folks can come up and visit her and that sort of thing and She's just a really neat animal and a really neat individual animal, too. She's she's a pretty unique opossum, in my opinion. Laura wants to know, what are her predators? Mm, so, great question. Predators <clears throat> include um, pretty much anything that wants to eat her. Great horned owls would eat her. They are slow. Um, these guys are. Uh, with that black and white, it's more white than black, so they do stand out when they're out at night. Um, coyotes will take um, these guys. Uh, as you know, if if they want to, generally, you know, any sort of larger predator, uh, fisher tend to go for porcupine. But I mean, given the opportunity, this is you know strongly a possibility for them to eat as well. Any sort of raptor um, will grab them, hawks, eagles, um, things like that. What have you got? So uh, you know, I don't know how much birds pick things for flavor. Um, but it's an interesting, opossums are fascinating because their body temperature is, is lower on average. And so they don't often get rabies. It's very, very rare for them to get rabies. Um, they're sort of like if, um, you know, if you were to design your own animal and you had a bunch of leftover things and threw them together, that's what you would have here. So, you know, only marsupial in North America. They have the most teeth of any mammal, but they don't really hunt. Um, they're, they're more scavengers. They have these funny front feet. The back feet look like gorilla feet. We'll try and get, I don't know if you can get that. See that thumb? So they really use that to grab and grasp, grasp things. Um, you know, they have this pouch, they're low body temperature. They're, they're just this funny, like, mishmash of amazingness and they're kind of aloof and goofy so no one really appreciates them <laughs> but we do huh oh we do and they're just phenomenal so most people um you know think that they're a nuisance or that they're not tidy or that they're dirty or you know disease carrying they're actually the opposite you know they, they help us get rid of those ticks so they help with Lyme disease um they help scavenge so they pick up um, you know, all the leftover food and, you know, dead animals and things like that. Um, and they're not vicious. You may find some, sometimes people will find them in their chicken coop. Um, they're not generally going after the chickens. Usually what they're going after is either the grain or they're going after the eggs. Um, and if an opossum can get in your chicken coop, then a weasel could definitely get in your chicken coop. And a weasel will not go for the eggs or the grain. It will go just for the chickens. Um, 
So these guys are really, they're very docile and very easy to live alongside. And, um, you know, if, and again, if you want to set out something like this with straw or hay in the bottom, or straw, not hay, because hay gets wet. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity to see who might move in and who knows, you know, these guys are definitely around. Um, I live in New Hampshire um, in a pretty rural town and we actually have them in, in the back. I found their little footprints in the snow this winter, which was kind of cool. Um, so they're, they're expanding. They're not just in cities or anything like that. They're definitely expanding their range um, and they definitely need our help. Right, Miss Thing? You're so fantastic. Um, let's see. We got some more questions. Sophia wants to know why she ended up at the Center for Wildlife. Great question. Again. Yeah. So unfortunately, sometimes we treat um, we treat a lot of babies at the center, and those babies come to us um, for numerous reasons. Sometimes um, the mom has been killed. Um, sometimes uh, the tree that the nest is in has fallen down. Um, they've tried to put the nest back up. They can't. You know, the mom hasn't come back to the area for whatever reason um, and depending upon the age of the animal uh, sometimes people with good intention um, try to raise the babies on their own we really urge people not to do that um, we really get that everybody loves the animals we love them um, as an animal lover sometimes you have to love them enough to let them go um, or let them go to where they can get the best care um, so like opossums for instance they require a special formula because they're the fat content in the milk is different um, they don't nurse like a regular um, baby mammal uh, like a squirrel or something like that are you going on an adventure or are you going to bed you can explore what do you think um, and so Unfortunately, what happened is someone raised her and tried to, or tried to raise her as their own, um, and that didn't work out very well. So she became quite tame, um, which can happen very easily, and it doesn't take much. Um, you know, no wild animal should ever approach you. So if one does, you know, you should be a little cautious if that's what they're doing, right, Miss Lady? We're very lucky to have her, um, but we do wish that she could could be wild. You're standing on my vest. I'm trying to think if I have any food in my pockets. Uh-oh. Are you going to find them? You're so cute. I don't know if you can hear her little nose. Katie, do you want to come I'm Come a little closer. Because all she's doing is sniffing. It's so cute. Guys hear that? Can you guys hear her? <laughs> She's going on an adventure. So like I said, we do take her for enrichment walks. You'll often see the pictures and videos of us um, taking our raptors for enrichment walks. Her enrichment walk looks a little different. Um, like I said, oftentimes we'll take her into um, empty enclosures and just let her walk around. So it's just a different experience for them. Um, so like this right here counts for enrichment for her because she's exploring, there's different smells. We got a great question too. Ooh. How good is her smell? Very, very good. So I would bet Jeff um, that. that her smell is, her sense of smell is better than ours because that is how she finds her food. Um, her, again, her eyesight is not great because she doesn't hunt or anything like that. What are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, so yeah, it's like a little adventure. Yeah, go for it. So yeah, her sense of smell is key. So um, for instance, right now she can smell anything that's been in here. Um, if we dropped any food for lunch. Oh, by the way, we're taking this in the shed um, that um, our leadership staff works in. So Ophelia says, I'm on a field trip. What do you think, lady? What do you think? Sniff, 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 sniff. So you'll see them... You know, even if she were to run, she would still be sort of bouncing along like a like an opossum does. They're not fast. They don't look like, you know, little cheetahs running all over the place. She says, oh, this is Kristen's desk, our executive director. Sniff, sniff. Oh, that's funny. And there's the Bernier Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> who's, that's our insurance company, who are stellar human beings. What are you doing, Ophie? 
Finn would like to know why her eyes look so big. Mm. So, two different reasons. One, their eyes generally are larger be, um, or look larger because they do have that ring of darker fur around them. Ophi's eyes look extra large and a little cross-eyed um, because when opossums uh, store fat, they store the fat behind their eye. Um, and then even when she loses weight, um, she doesn't lose that, oh, a little shake, shake. She doesn't lose that fat. Um, so that, that chunk is there to stay. Um, she is in a great weight. She's in a healthy weight. Do you want to go into your enclosure? I can open it if you want. So she knows that this is her, her bed. So whenever she sometimes just puts herself to bed, which is pretty funny. She also may decide to come back out again. So giving her the option of doing whatever she wants to do is always a good thing. It helps them decide and have a good time and enjoy themselves. Oh, Ophie, are you going to stay in? Are yeah, Beth, Beth had a question. So um, is it a good idea for people to have shelters in their I, yards for them in the winter? I think it's a great idea. I do think that if we decide as humans to do that, um, that you do want to make sure that you are monitoring that. Um, so, for instance, you know, that you're not having animals squabble, um, that this, the place is kept clean. Um, like I mentioned, you can use straw, but I wouldn't use hay. Hay can get really wet. Um, I'm hoping that she's going to start grooming because usually that's what she does when she puts herself back to bed. And that's like the best thing ever. Um, but they, I think it's great to give them a shelter. Um, and if you're, if you're on the fence about it, you can also create your own natural shelter. You know, look, look in the rock wall or look, is there a little burrow area on the edge of your yard that, you know, you want to create, oh, big yawn, good job. Create a, like, you know, a little den for and see who moves in. You never know who will move in. She's starting to preen. Ophie, we want to watch you because it's so cute. Yes. Oh, she's cleaning it. Here we go. That's like one of my favorite things to watch. So we're going to watch, you'll watch how she grooms. She cleans in between each of her little fingers. She cleans her whole face, so she gets all that strawberry, all that egg yolk, all that stuff off. <laughs> One day I'll get a slow-mo video of it and it'll be amazing. <laughs> and then you'll see she also reaches up and cleans her ears and does all of those things too. So this is why they're so great um, <clears throat> about being able to um, eat so many ticks in our habitats because you know when you clean like that you're bound to do it joseph has a question do they have padded paws and feet oh great question joseph they do they have cute little pads on their feet sort of like a, a cat or a dog um they don't have the fur in between uh the toes and the pads like your cat or your dog might um there's less fur on those toes and those feet but yes, very cute little padded feet. I'll try and find that picture um, and post it maybe in the comments. Are you so tired now, Ophelia? This is how everyone feels this Friday. We've had good breakfasts. You're so good. You see those whiskers? The whiskers are also key too. My favorite, I don't know if you can see it on the film, her side whiskers are white and then the two whiskers on the top of her nose are black. Oh, shaky shake. Oh yeah, why? I don't know. I just think it's aesthetically pleasing, <laughs> and I love it. Oh. It's like a little panda, and look, I call her nose a bubblegum nose. She's just so, you know, for an animal that has the most teeth of any mammal, they're just rather amazing, aren't you? Are you so sweet? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for eating all the ticks, Miss Ophelia. That's good stuff. Charlie says she is super cute. Aww. She is. She is. She's a wonderful ambassador because she does change people's minds about opossums. Now, mind you, if, if the only experience I had with an opossum was one that I had accidentally, you know, cornered or something and they were hissing and growling and passing out and all those things, I would be like, mm, nope, I'm all set. But when you get to see them, like she, like we just watched her, she was able to go in here on her own choice. Um, she just got to walk around and do whatever she wanted, so she's not stressed. She's very relaxed. Um, and when you're able to see them in their own comfortable state, 
that's when you really get to appreciate who they are as individuals and their species. Um, you know, and out in the wild, an opossum might not let you watch them sort of relax and chill out in their den like this because they might be afraid that you would eat them. Um, but Ophelia, because she's been worked with and trained and also just because of her stellar personality, um, she's just really a magnificent ambassador for her species. So just imagine, like, this is what they do when they're out in your backyard denning up. They just sort of go in, they clean their, their nose, they relax. She's like, it's true. And Kesh wants to know, how many teeth do they have? They have 50 teeth, Kesh Erica. Indeed, indeed. Kesh, have you seen them up in Owl's Head? This is Kesh parent. Yep, that's my Kesh. Oh. Well, Kesh Erica is her middle name. Oh, okay. <laughs> I only know one Kesh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, Ophelia. It's true. You're such a good girl. But yeah, um, I should address Kesh the issue. Yes. 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 So <laughs> most, many times people do, if they have horses, they do not want them around um, opossums because of a disease that opossums can carry. Um, which we respect and understand um, because you can't be everything for everything. Or sorry, you can't be everything for everyone. And so when folks, um, we're very appreciative because many times we'll have um, barn owners or stable owners call us and say, you know, I don't, I don't want to kill this animal, but how do I get them to stay away? Um, and so one, you know, a couple tips are make sure that all the grain and everything is, you know, kept airtight, like it's locked up, which you want to do anyways, because we all know that horses are hay burners and grain burners. And so you want to keep that nice and, and um, tightly stocked up. And the other thing is that if you do notice them, watch for droppings and things like that. If you do notice them, you can easily get them to move on um, through uh, bright lights, through um, turning the radio on. She's going to take a nap. Are you going to take a nap? Um, and you can just help move on and realize that they don't really want to be your neighbor. Although, Ophi, I just love you. <laughs> Jackie has a great question. Are they located throughout the state, and should we try to attract more of them to our habitat? So they are located throughout the state. I don't know of any large studies um, that have, you know, looked at where exactly they are throughout the state. Um, however, I, I am not... I never tell people to try and attract certain animals. Um, I think that you can be a great steward to your uh, yard and your environment. Um, you can leave the leaves down in the fall so that you can get those beautiful salamanders and bugs and you know things like that for the spring. Um, again, do that like natural planting of natural foods and berries and um, things like that. Uh, but then also, again, like if you want to attract them, but maybe not put this in your yard, you can create like go out and build a little den and maybe someone will move in. Maybe someone won't. Um, but just realize that if you do attract them or invite them to your space, um, that you then need to respect the fact that you invited them in. <laughs> I guess you could say. Right. Oh, you're so tired. <laughs> She was named after um, the song Ophelia. Um, and we sing it to her often, don't we? Jill, are there different species of opossums? There are. There's actually opossums, um, which are these guys. And then there's actually another animal called a possum. Um, and she and uh, Ophelia here is a Virginia opossum. So I don't know how many different species there are. But yes, there are definitely different species. They're all around the world, huh? All right, lovey-dovey. We're going to let her go to sleep, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and if you want to go... Oh, I meant to tell you we have uploaded and started our YouTube channel. So all of these Facebook Lives can be up. That will be on our YouTube channel. So if you go to our website at www.thecenterforwildlife.org, um, you can go and check that out. And I think I already put the link to the YouTube channel in the comments. We're learning on the fly how to do all this stuff remotely. So we appreciate your patience and your support. And I will go back through afterwards and try and answer any questions that we missed. And we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Good Bye. night.